Hi everyone, welcome back to SAT2 Math 2C. So we continue on our topics of very, uh, fundamental functions, fundamental expressions. Uh, in the last lecture we talked about um, inequalities, right? So either linear or nonlinear inequalities, simple, straightforward. We went over sign analysis, so please go over and make sure you know how to do sign analysis because it becomes an integral part when we do deal with the much difficult topics later. Um, so we're going to continue on that path right now and talk about another set of sort of functions or expressions going to deal with. In this case, absolute equalities and e inequalities. So what is an absolute number? Well, an absolute number is just a positive value of that number. It's a very simple concept. So if A, if you have, let's say, 2, absolute value of 2, just what? Simply you're taking the positive number of 2, right? So it'll just be 2, because that is the positive value. Now, if you have negative 2, then you're simply stripping away the negative value and becomes 2 again. So you're only looking at a positive number. Okay? You're only looking at a positive number of that value. So very straightforward. Uh, people do that because an absolute value gives you the only positive value. There are some mathematical implications in physics as well. So it's a very important slash very useful connotation that we have here. Now, what do we need to know about absolute values? So let's take a look at this first concept. Absolute value equalities. If you have an expression, right, let's say x, right, what is this going to be equal to? Well, this is going to be equal to x if x is greater or equal to 0, right? If it's positive, that's what it is. It's just going to be that. And it's going to be equal to negative x if x is less than 0. Right? In the case of negative 2, it will be negative negative 2, so it will be 2. So that's how it works. That's how you learn in school. Eh, not really the most straightforward way. Here's how, how I want you to solve absolute equalities. Let's take a look at an example. I have 3x plus 2 is equal to 5. Okay? I want to solve for this. The only thing I want you to know when it comes to absolute equations is that you got to strip away the absolute value sign and you're going to get two expressions. You always have two expressions, okay? The first expression is just a regular one. So 3x plus 2 is equal to 5, right? Because if that's equal to 5, you put it in, that works. What's the other expression? You're always going to get 2 and the other one is what? 3x plus 2 is equal to negative 5. Because if this expression is negative 5, you put negative 5 in there, right? That still works. Okay? So you always, when you solve an absolute e equality, it's not that hard, it's not that difficult. All you have to do is just strip away the absolute value sign because we don't know how to deal with it, right? And equate it to the value over there or the negative of that value. Okay? That's it. That's all you have to do. So in this case, we could just say, all right, solve 3x is equal to 3 or x is equal to 1, in this case, 3x is equal to minus 7, right? And x will be 9 minus 7 over 3. So that will be the set of solutions that satisfy this condition. Okay? Now, what if I change up a little bit, make it slightly more difficult? Uh, let's make things a little bit complicated. Let's say I have plus 10 is equal to 2, uh, well, equal to 12, right? So now what do we do? Well, it's not clean, right? You can't just strip away right there and it, it say it's equal to negative or plus 12. Always isolate it, right? So when you have that, let's subtract 10 from both sides. So you get 3x plus 2, absolute value is equal to 2, and then you can go from there, okay? Then the rest of it will be pretty straightforward. You strip 3x plus 2 is equal to 2, or 3x plus 2 is equal to negative 2, right? And you'll be done. Okay? So I'm not going to solve these, but that's how it works. So 
what are really the steps? Well, there are really only two steps. One, all you have to do is what? You have to um, basically isolate the absolute value by self. Okay? You isolate the absolute value by self. And then number two, split into positive and the negative, okay? Right, into the positive two and the negative two. And that's it. That's all you have to do. All right? So not that bad. Let's take a look at another example. I can make this slightly more complicated by having introduced two absolute values. Does this really change our method? No, it doesn't, right? We're still going to isolate absolute value. In this case, hey, both of them isolated. That's great, right? We're going to split into plus minus. So when we strip it, we know that x plus 2 is going to be equal to 3x minus 10. That's the simpler one. That's all we should just take it away, right? That's all you have to do. What's the second one? The second solution is going to be what? The second solution is going to be x plus 2 is equal to negative 3x minus 10. That's it. Well, you say, can we do the other way? Of course you can do the other way. You can say it's 3x minus 10 is equal to negative x plus 2, but you realize that both expressions are the same. Right? So absolutely no difference. And then you basically solve for this guy, and you solve for this guy, and you get your solution set. OK? That's all it is to equalities. Again, straightforward, stick with the rule, right? Isolate, make sure it's absolute value sign on one side, right? And then what? Get rid of it. And make sure you split into a plus and a minus. I've seen this question on test before. And I uh, just want to see. Uh, and I want you to solve for x. Take a second. Take a look at this and see if you can solve it, right? You might be able to uh, do the same thing, you know, isolate the absolute value, where well, that's fine, and it splits into plus and minus, and you can solve it. Now, just look at this expression. Does that one have a solution? The answer is no. Why not? Look at this. You have a negative number there, right? Can absolute value give you a negative number? No. So the solution is what? There are no solution to this one. So sometimes the SAT will try to trick you, so be very careful. That's why I said it's very important. I mean, we all know how to solve linear equations. That's not a big deal. The big deal is that you have to understand what you're doing, right? Absolute value means you have to output a positive number. You're not getting that positive number, OK? If you don't get that positive number, there's no solution. So don't be tricked. Again, the test is not hard, but there are a lot of tricks you can, you can fall and a lot of traps you can fall into. You want to be careful with that stuff, OK? So that's all really I want to caution you guys about absolute equalities. Let's move on to the next one. Absolute inequalities. Well, what's the big deal? Let's take a look at an example. I have 3x plus 2 minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. Right? You know, it gets a little bit dicey. That's what you have. Again, do these rules apply to the same inequalities? They absolutely do. What's the first thing we got to do? We got to isolate the absolute value, right? So how do I isolate the absolute value? All right, let's make this into 12 just to make it easier, right? So we will add 12 to both sides. We'll end up getting 3x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 12, right? First thing done. What's the next thing? Split into plus and minus. Again, very simple. Let's remember how to do this. The first one is always simple. It's just 3x plus 2 greater or equal to 12, right? That we know. What's the second one? The second one, when, you deal with, when you're dealing with inequalities, you got to make sure you what? What I like to call flip and negate. What you're going to do is you're going to flip the sign and negate the number. OK? How does that? Well. And this is going to be 3x plus 2. You're going to flip this sign, which becomes less than or equal to, and negate this, which will be negative 12. Always remember, flip and negate. 
Well, it's actually applicable if you think about it. In the first case, when it's equality, you're flipping the gating, except if you flip the equal sign, you still get an equal sign, right? So if it makes your life easier, just remember, when you're dealing with absolute value, the first one is just strip away the absolute value sign. The second one is always going to be flipping and negating, okay? So once you get that done, the, the rest of it is pretty straightforward. You subtract two from both sides, right? You get 3x is greater than or equal to 10. x is greater than or equal to 10 over 3. And then if you look at this one, you get subtract 2 from both sides. 3x is less than or equal to negative 14, right? Or x is going to be equal to less than or equal to negative 14 over 3. Now, how do you express that? It will be if you do the number line, right? This will be negative 14 over 3. This will be 10 over 3. This simply says, okay, x is greater or equal to that. And this is less than or equal to. So that will be the second solution. Okay? And if you wanted to really get technical, you will say or. That's all you need to know. Okay? Now, uh, let's try another example, make it slightly more interesting. I just want to show you a different variety of problems so you get a chance to practice. Let's say 3x minus 12 is less than or equal to 0. Well, let's make it interesting. Just say is less than 0. All right? Again, what do we do? Isolate. Remember, two you only have two steps. Very simple. I don't give you any harder instructions, right? Long instruction. No. Two steps. Isolate. Well, I'm going to add 12 to both sides, which means I'll get 3x plus 2, which is less than 12. And I'm going to, again, what? Get rid of the split into plus and minus. Well, again, the positive one is always easy. It's 3x plus 2 is less than 12, right? And the other one will be 3x plus 2 is greater than negative 12, right? I flip and I negate it, right? Flip and negate it. So, and again, go ahead and solve these. 3x is less than 10. x is less than 10 over 3, right? This is 3x is greater than negative 14, or x is greater than negative 14 over 3. Again, keep in mind, if you multiply and divide it by a negative number, you have to what? Flip the sign, but we don't have that in this case. Now what does it look like? Well, I have, this is negative 14 over 3, right? This is 10 over 3. I have x is less than 10 over 3, which will cover this area, right? I have the other one, which says x is greater than negative 14 over 3, which will cover that area. That means the solution is just going to be the overlapping area, right? So what you could do is you can write this together and say, well, it's actually x is greater than negative 14 over 3 and less than 10 over 3, and that is what this region represents. Okay? So, straightforward. Remember, two steps, isolate absolute value, split into plus and minus, and you're done. Doesn't matter if it's equality or inequality, you use the same method, you solve them the same exact way to make your life easier. All right? If you go by that, you won't be able to make mistakes, you will always be able to get the right answer. And also, think. Think before you do these problems. If you get an absolute value that's equal to a negative, that's impossible. So keep that in mind when you're taking the test.